hello and welcome back to another garden guide. It's actually the spring equinox today. Hopefully you can hear me, our chickens are making a lot of noise. We just got two more introduced to the flock so they're kicking off a little bit. First things first, we've actually been out and bought a few plug plants this morning. We were in the agricultural shop buying some chickens and yeah I just couldn't resist <laughs> getting some. We have some garden beds that we showed in a few videos back. Um, that we got sent from a company called Vegigar. I'll leave a link to them in our description and you can get 10% off with our code FRANKIE10. We've just filled up one so far. They take a lot to fill. We've done like a Hugo culture. So I'm going to go chuck a load of compost and um, manure on the top layer now, get those plug plants in, show you what we're planting and then I'll show you what seeds I'm going to sow today. Oh, I, I divide my seeds by like month and the March one is like this big. There are so many seeds to get planting so yeah and I'll be going in this greenhouse. New ones just bought up the compost and some horse manure on the electric scooter slash our, our tractor. <laughs> Ten tomato plants here, five cherry tomatoes and five corisel de boy. That might be too many for this bed because spacing is about two feet, which I think is 60 centimetres. I'm using my trusty hori hori because that's got the measurements on, which is always handy. I don't know which tomatoes are which, so we'll just <laughs> find out as they grow. And then I have a couple of courgette plants that I'm just going to put either end of the beds and kind of hope that they maybe like cascade off. It's very warm today, I have to get out of my jeans. So, this is all my seeds <laughs> and this is the March pack. And then I also have notes uh, just based on the things I would like to be growing each year. And this is my very, very long list for March. <laughs> uh, I will put this on my spreadsheet that's available on Patreon, just if you wanted to have a better look at it. But yes, spring has arrived. I will show you all that I've got to sow. So I'm actually not going to sow this today because I've got loads in the garden already, although it's going to seed. But grows absolutely amazing here and then I am going to sow the Mizuna. These are both Asian greens, lovely spicy leaves and Tatsoi as well. I have already got some on the go so I won't plant those but you can if you would like to. These are some cabbage seeds so you can sow, if it, is it spring cabbages you'd sow now? I always get confused with how the cabbage system works you get spring, summer, autumn cabbages. Very excitingly, I can start melons. I've got some beans, some cucumber and some chickpeas. I did try chickpeas in the winter and they did not do well. So even though the pack says you can, I would recommend waiting till now. And I think a lot of these things they recommend is if you have a heated greenhouse. So that's why the season can seem longer, but yeah. Best just waiting till March for most of these kind of things. Um, I've got two types of basil, some Liguria tomatoes. We're going to go wild with tomatoes this year, so we need to get some more tomato seeds. These round courgettes, uh, Charleston Grey watermelon seeds. I got these from Nick and Ange. And last year I grew my first watermelon, proudest moment ever, so I'm very excited to grow them. And then I've got loads of aubergine varieties. And also, seeing these ones made me realise why some of you guys call these eggplants. 
because they look like eggs. Uh, peppers can get going. I'm going to plant some more peas because mine are not doing great. And get some more sweet peas going. Don't know why these are in the veggie section though. They should be in the flower section. Spinach. I've really struggled growing spinach here, but we shall keep trying. Turnips. Uh, some red okra. Very intrigued to see how this grows here. Some sweet corn. It's the funniest picture of sweet corn I've ever seen. Green radish loofah. I'm really excited to grow that this year. I managed to save some seeds from the one single one I grew last year, so hopefully a bit more success. And then some of these globe artichokes. I think I got these seeds from nearby veggies as well. We did a little sweet seed swap. I prefer eating these kinds of artichokes to sun chokes or farter chokes as we call them. Kohlrabi and some more okra there. So there are all the veggies. I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna sow all this today. We'll see how far we get. You can also be sowing carrots and sweet potatoes. I need to find some slips for those. Amaranth actually, I've got some here and I've got another pack somewhere. I don't know what type of amaranth this is because I've got the orange giant one that grows really tall, but I know you get a smaller pink one. And these are from nearby veggies too, so interested to see how that plant comes up. Oh, we've got beetroot seeds that we bought the other day in the kitchen. Rainbow Child does amazing here, so defo grow it if you are. I think it'll grow amazing in anywhere actually. We used to grow it in the UK. Moving on to flowers, I've got some proper chamomile here. This should be the one that you can actually make tea from because I collected some that grows wild on our land and the wildlanders that's funny because I just said wild on our land. The wild land has got in touch and told me they think it might be stinking chamomile, which is what they have on their land and doesn't make the best tea. Nasturtiums. I adore this plant and I cannot get it to grow here. The flowers and leaves are edible. They're super nice. They're beautiful. Aren't they, Diogo? And yeah, really struggling to get them going. I will feel severe. If you have any tips, please let me know. Some straw flowers. These are really cute when you dry them. Pansies, I think they could be one of my favourite flowers. Also edible, make salads look amazing, grow super easy, love them. Marigolds, so we'll put those in with the tomatoes. Oh, but oh, Cosmos, my favourite flower. I can't decide. Again, these grow amazing here in zone 9, but we also grew them back in Wales. They're just a beautiful, brilliant plant. The sweet peas. Uh, some black cumin. I think this is the one that you get. Yeah, the nigella or onion seeds from. I will double check that. Oh yeah, there we go. The black seeds have an intense flavour. So yeah, this is the one you can collect the seeds from to eat. The nigella sativa. Big sunflowers. want to grow loads of sunflowers, so I'll probably get some more varieties. Uh, Fasalia, I've got some of this going already. This is a really good green manure, but also brilliant for the bees. I grew one hibiscus plant last year and it got some of the calyx on. This is like, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but this calyx is what you make the tea from. But the frost got it, so I'm starting these as early as I can to hopefully be able to make my own tea. This hibiscus tea is delicious and also very good for your blood pressure. Apparently. These are some flowers from nearby veggies, Spanish flag. Apparently they are beautiful, so I'm hoping I do well with these seeds. And these are asters, I think. Is that the English word? It's the Spanish word, so I'm going to go with asters. Uh, chicken, get out of my garden bed. And then I've got lots of other nigella seeds. These are ones I've saved from this beautiful flower I have. And then some giant African marigolds, also from nearby veggies. I then do also have this collection of very random seeds that I'm not really going to go through. They're just quite obscure and cool. Lots of stuff from nearby veggies, lots of stuff sent to me from a lady called Sandra, like wildflowers and stuff. So that'll be going out at some point. Some coffee beans to try. Be very cool to grow a coffee plant. So, yeah, I've got a lot of sewing to do. 
so though I am no gardening expert, I'm just learning as I go and I thought that these videos might be helpful for other people that are moving to Portugal or working in a new climate and trying to <laughs> adapt to that. Let me know if there's like anything specific I can share more of. Uh, I think sometimes showing my failures is actually really helpful because maybe a more seasoned gardener wouldn't think to, <laughs> to share this knowledge like not planting cucumbers in January in an unheated greenhouse. <laughs> um, one tip I did read from that was that if you work out the germination or if you find out the germination time that most seeds take, so I think cucumbers it was like 14 days usually, so that you know that after 14 days if there's no germination you know you can discard those seed trays that have the cucumbers in. So I thought that was kind of helpful as a way if not like wondering if they're going to come to life because they ain't. So I would just also give you a quick little tour of the garden, how it's looking, what is growing well. We still have lots of olive branches here from when you unpruned these olive trees and we're going to invest in a small wood chipper I think rather than burning these because I am loving having wood chip on the ground and if we can make our own then that will be amazing. So this is the strawberry bed, we've got lemon tree and some pansies and some self-seeded borage in here. This plant is have gone pretty crazy but I love it. The uh, flowers make beautiful additions to salads so you can eat these, you can also eat the leaves. They feel a bit um, prickly, like to the touch you almost feel like they're gonna spike you or something but they're, they're not at all. They're fine to eat and they taste a little bit like cucumber but some people don't like that texture. The strawberries are starting to flower. Actually they've been flowering for a long time because it's been strangely warm here and then they tend to just die but definitely starting to see some strawberries coming through which is very exciting. I love strawberries. And then this is all just a bit of a mess but I've left the weeds as ground cover and a lot of it is like vetch and clover which are green manures that are fixing nitrogen into the soil so worth leaving if you're not trying to grow something else there. If you are trying to grow something else there they get enormous as you can see uh, so they just smother anything so best to pull up if they're near your plants. The thyme and oregano here are just super happy and settled in and just continue to grow throughout the year and then we've got some sage which is still going. Some chard here that has been a bit slow but I think probably I put some more compost down yesterday and gave it some water so hopefully they just needed that. And there's one, one sole spinach, struggled to grow spinach here so I love spinach too so I'm hoping <laughs> I can get that to grow. And then I'm pretty sure these are some of the Egyptian walking onions. Lettuce has been doing really well and this one I just cut out because normally people do a pick and come again with these so you can take the outer leaves but I just really fancied like a proper lettuce so I just cut it and left like three of these big outer leaves on and it has started to grow back again. So I could do the same with that sort of just cut it there so you get more like the heart of the lettuce because sometimes I just don't really like <laughs> the nitpicking of taking all the outer leaves off and leaving the middle ones. And then all my rocket <laughs> has gone to seed. This absolute bush of it here. These are all little ones. I think we've just had really strange weather with like lack of rain and then real warmth and then really cold nights. Rocket's great, you can eat the flowers and then the little seed pods that will form you can also eat and the leaves still taste pretty good to me. They've not gone too bitter. They're just very spicy. So it's no worries really and the bees absolutely love it. I really need to come and pick this. I think it's a white radish. Um, but I just kind of wanted to leave it to see how big it gets, but I don't think it's growing anymore. Actually, it's going going to flower, so I might be too late. This is the Rouge Matisse. Uh, that's all going to flower. I'll show you the ones down in the bottom veggie garden because the flowers are absolutely stunning against this red foliage. Again, I'm still eating it. My parsley is doing really well. There's one big bush at the end and then I put in these little seedlings and then I've got some cauliflower plants in here and it's really funny because these ones are really small and then there's one at the back here so it's just enormous so I don't know if it's just getting more sun or, or what and then these are a load of leek plug plants and I've got some sweet peas just behind them that are growing very 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 slowly 
but I'm sure now that we've hit the equinox and we're getting the longer days and the warmth, everything's gonna have a bit of a growth spurt. And then just through here, where we've fenced off the garden here to, well, mostly to try and stop Diogo from escaping because he likes to run up this wall, but it's kind of created this really nice enclosed space here. So this is a Taunton Dean Kale that the birds are pecking at, so I'll take these off and give them to the chickens, but it's growing really tall. I think it could get taller still. And then these are my peas that are just struggling. They're rotting at the bottom, but I'm going to leave them and see, see what happens, because there's still a few flowers on them. So yeah, I'm a bit disappointed, but I can sow some more. These are all lots of onions that we sowed from sets. And um, there's some garlic in here too. There's uh, three rows of carrots that I need to come in and thin out. Right, I will take you down to the big main bed that has been a little bit abandoned by me recently because I've been working on the other parts of the garden, but we'll see how it's going on. Some, some things growing in there, but yeah, eventually this won't be a veg garden. As you can see, it's really soon in the shade. Um, and then in the summer it's just brutally in the sun all the time. It's horrible to work in during the summer, so yeah, it'll be getting moved, but still got that big fennel and all these cabbages growing in here. But what is exciting in here is the tallest asparagus I've ever seen. <laughs> I can't believe how big it is. I'm still not going to pick it. I don't think they are old enough and I do actually need to transplant them when I move the bed. So all my sorrels survived. There was just a few leaves. I'm going to stick this stick in to remind me it's here. There's quite a few weeds in here. Uh, these are perennial leeks. They're doing pretty happy. Lots of the cabbage is going to seed but the flowers are gorgeous and the bees love them so yeah we're leaving it be but these cabbages are bulking up quite nicely and then this is the rouge matisse asian greens that has gone to flower but how stunning are these yellow flowers with this red leaf behind it's just gorgeous i would grow it just for this and the fact that it's so tasty and abundant is just it's a brilliant plant i really love it uh, this has a lot of cabbages in and also a lot of weeds <laughs> um, i have tried hay mulching down here but i didn't have enough for here and i don't really like the hay mulch it just gets everywhere mostly i think because diogo just runs through our garden as the potatoes are starting to come up so i need to earth them up and Put some more soil on, cover them so that we can grow more. And then I've got broccoli and dill going down the middle. Just spotted this little beauty. I love these white daffodils. So yeah, there you go. That's the garden in March. I hope you have found this useful. And uh, yeah, happy growing, happy spring equinox. We have made it, spring is here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in April.